in a borrow pit along the Mississippi River mainline levee in Ascension Parish, Louisiana, um, as part of a, an aquatic study for the Mississippi River levees um, supplemental EIS for 2019. And this study is an extension of an earlier study that was done in the late 1990s, also part of a supplemental EIS. The difference today is that we have uh, much better technology to help us collect these data. And we can now let an autonomous underwater vehicle collect the water quality data throughout the entire borrow pit. Whereas before we would have to take transects or, or profiles to be able to quantify the water quality parameters within these pits. And that is enabling us to much more precisely and comprehensively map the value of these aquatic um, areas for fishes, macroinvertebrates, and other organisms. This is part of the active floodplain, and even though borrow pits are man-made water bodies, they still function because they're still connected to the river, and they function as spawning areas and rearing areas for fishes that utilize backwaters of the Mississippi River. Even though the mainline Mississippi River levee has reduced the historic floodplain from about 20 million acres to currently 2 million acres, it's still 2 million acres of very high quality habitat. It is the largest active connected floodplain in a U.S. river system. One other piece of very important information that we're getting from this is the impact of big-headed carps on these areas because um, the data from previous studies were collected before the introduction, the, the widespread introduction of uh, big-headed carps into this system. And um, this is sort of an indirect, big picture way to look at the uh, impacts of, that, of those species on the fish assemblages and the, and the general productivity of these backwaters. These are highly productive backwaters and they support massive uh, growth and reproduction of these invasive carps. So understanding uh, how that affects the bigger picture of the ecosystem is very important. Historically, we've taken one or two water quality measurements over time at surface and bottom. With the EcoMapper, I can now take thousands of water quality points in a matter of hours. For example, the system that we're on today is 50 acres. We were able to collect bathymetry, turbidity, conductivity, temperature, and pH in one swoop. We're not just using the EcoMapper to collect water quality, we're tying it to fish assemblage. So we're going out and we're using one of the more primitive technologies, gill netting and seining, and then we're tying it in with some of the most state-of-the-art equipment in the world. The Arctic Fish Ecology team is able to translate this, these microhabitat features into fish ecology values, which is really a unique capability. So using the points, the EcoMapper, as Alan said, gathers thousands of points. So we can take those into ArcGIS and create a continuous surface. So this, this continual layer that overlays this borrow pit of dissolved oxygen or chlorophyll or turbidity, which are important metrics to fish. Focusing on dissolved oxygen, the, the thing that we can do is if we look at that point cloud of dissolved oxygen and look for a range of DO that's important to us specific fish species or to the fish assemblage as a whole, we can estimate the volume of water where the dissolved oxygen is high enough to support those fish that we're interested in. That can then be translated into management measures. We can change the connectivity of the borrow pit to allow fresh water to flow in and create a little bit of flow which will improve the DO. We can add more tree cover along the outside edges of the borrow pits because that tree cover will shade the borrow pit, that algae won't grow as fast, and that algae, although it produces dissolved oxygen during the day, at night it sucks all that oxygen up and then there's no oxygen for the fish. So there are specific management measures we can implement in this borrow pit, but also throughout the Mississippi floodplain as a whole from this data we're gathering from the EcoMapper. One of the, the big um, benefits to doing this study is that not only are we repeating um, a study from 20 years ago 
so it's directly comparable. We're also collecting additional data that allows us to input these water bodies into our larger ecohydrology database. So the larger study of the um, connectivity of these water bodies that still lie within the active floodplain to the Mississippi River and assess their value on a larger scale. So our, in our ecohydrology study is looking at the frequency of connection of water bodies within the active floodplain that are at different elevations. So depending on your hydrograph, um, different water bodies will connect to the river, to the main channel, for a different period of time, a different time of the year, and some have flow through and some are backwater connections only. And fishes and macroinvertebrates and other organisms utilize all those different habitats differently. So understanding that is a way to get a, a bigger picture and a more comprehensive picture of the greater Mississippi River ecosystem.